it's somewhere in and around the Trossard League, if that makes sense. Then you have Marcus Rashford, come on. If you know me, you know how I feel about Marcus Rashford. I've been talking about Rashford for a very, very, very long time. Ever since I started this channel, one of my first, one of my first few videos was about Rashford. Um, PC City Footy Podcast, we also talk about football, players' choice. I've been talking about and raving about Rashford for the longest time. There's no way I'm not going to put Rashford out. Okay, so back with another tail list. This time we are ranking the best Premier League wingers. You know, I did my best to kind of rank these players, or at least to kind of put them under the winger umbrella. A lot of these players play a bit more inside. Some of them like to play a bit deeper. Some of them like to play more as forwards. I did my best, guys. Let me know in the comments if there are any players that you wouldn't rank as wingers. But once again, here are the players in the tier list. And these are the players that we are going to rank. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into it. If you haven't watched already, I've done the Premier League midfielders on Monday after the Premier League attackers yesterday and today. As I said, Premier League wingers. Let's get into it. So I'm with, ben with Bernardo Silva. Some players got cut off at the top. My bad. Bernardo Silva. This year, world class. Bernardo Silva is one of those players that at times, you know, you can rank him as a midfielder. As I said, some of these players... You kind of just take your pick, but for um, Bernardo Silva for now, I think definitely deserves to be in that world class tier. Um, as far as the other wingers in the world go, not most, not all of them are providing what Bernardo Silva provides in the game. You know, the creativity that he provides, the, the ability to win back the ball as quickly as possible, one of the best pressing midfielders. In the world, the one on one ability, one of the best dribblers we have in the game, passing ability. The only thing that you kind of you kind of can begin to knock silver for and take points for is his goal scoring ability. But for that, context matters. I think he's not really asked to do that as much at um at Man City. That's besides the point. I think Silver deserves to be in that world class team. Then you move on to a player like Jaden Sancho, and I think that once again Sancho's had a below average season. I don't think Sancho is in this tier because I still think he has some good qualities, but at the same time, it's just I can't put him anywhere higher than below average. It's just lack class of Sancho, and it's a shame because as a Sancho fan, as someone, as someone who followed that Sancho saga to United. You know, pretty much every day I used to stay up to like 1 a.m., 2 a.m., just just looking or watching for new information for him to come to United. And when he finally came to United, and this is what we get a Poundland version of the player he used to be. It's sad. It's truly sad, but it is what it is. Sancho, below average. Moving on to Mohamed Salah, and I've seen a lot of criticism for Salah this year. Yes, he's not been as good. Yes, he could have done a few things better. But there's no way that I can't rank Salah in the world-class tier. Even with the things that he does provide to, to Liverpool. Like when you put all of that together, people are trying to blame some of uh, Liverpool's um, some of Liverpool's shortcomings this season onto Salah. And I just don't think that's fair. I don't think that's fair at all. You know, um, Sal is a player that, um, who time and time again, even when you, when he has a bad season, he's still putting up numbers that see that see him at the very top of the league. And once again, even with numbers aside, Salah has been instrumental to this uh, Liverpool team. Sal is world class. He's had uh, he's not had as good as a season as he's usually has. But he's still world class in my opinion. Then you move on to a guy like Track Grealish. And you know, I, I know a few people that would have Grealish in the world class tier as well. Not me personally. I'm going to have Jack Grealish in the Premier League class or Premier League quality tier. I think Jack Grealish has been very good this season. I just don't think he is as good as a Bernardo Silva or Mohamed Tala. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you want to have a debate, we'll do it in the comments. 
But I don't again. I don't think he is as good as a Bernardo Silva or as a Mohamed Salah. He's been instrumental to City this season, but even with the season he's had this year, again, I don't think he eats in the same ta- table as a Salah or a Bernardo Silva. Then we move on to a guy like Trossard, and I think Trossard has been good this season. You know what he came in for, what he came into Arsenal for, what he's been able to do for the team. I think he's good, and I think that. Him being in the good tier, it's kind of deser- deserved. Then we want to play like Saint Maxim. Um, there was a time this season where I'd have perhaps said Saint Maxim was in this tier, in the Premier League quality tier. I still think Saint Maxim is a very good player, but overall, overall credit of the season in the Premier League for Saint Maxim. I I'm gonna put him in the good tier, someone in somewhere in and around the Trossard League, if that makes sense. Then, you have Marcus Rashford, come on. If you know me, you know how I feel about Marcus Rashford. I've been talking about Rashford for a very, very, very long time. Ever since I started this channel, one of my first, one of my first few videos was about Rashford. Um, PC 40 podcast, we also talk about football, player's choice. I've been talking about and raving about Rashford for the longest time. There's no way I'm not going to put Rashford at world class. <laughs> If you know me, you if you know me, if you watch my content, there's no way that you really thought that I wasn't going to put Rashford in this tier. Come on, guys. Come on. <laughs> Rashford's always going to be in this tier for me. Not always going to be in this tier for me, but based on the performance that he's had this year, that's where I think Rashford should be. You know, with this United team, you look at the other options around him. Where cost? Sancho. Um, and Anthony's not been as bad by the same time Anthony's been very inconsistent inconsistent this season Martial it's like and the fact that he was able to put up 30 or 30 31 goals plus the three that he had in the world club so you're pushing that to 33 34 world class player and I'm glad Rashford's finally been able to reach that that tier that standard because for the longest time he was always somewhere in and around these two tiers for me but this year, world class he is, and I'm so happy for him. Then you move, to, you, you move on to a guy like Almiron, who at a time this season he was really pushing, he was really pushing um, this tier again. I want to leave him this year. Um, I don't want to say good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave Almiron at good for now, and then we'll circle back and see. If he deserves to be in that tier. Then you have a guy like Jota. Who sh- really should be here or here. But you know there, there have been factors that came into Jota's season. Things like injury. I know you can't control injuries. But we're talking about this season and the overall balance. They do come into play. Missing games and etc. And I, I, I don't want to pull Jota at below average. I'm just going to pull Jota at mid. I think Jota's had a mid season. When he's played he's been good. But at the same time that's the thing when he's played. Jota Ahmed, hopefully he comes back next season stronger and you're beginning to look at this Liverpool attack and it's getting scary. Especially if Darwin Nunes has a, has a good enough season. Salah, Jota, Gakpo, Alvarez, sorry, um, Luis Diaz. That's a strong team. That's a very strong team. Then another guy, um, I, I won't say that I've been raving about, but another guy that, you know, I, I, I back time and time again. Kyrie Saka, you love to see it, another play in the world class tier. And I'm, I like my world class tier so far. Saka, Rashford, Talib, Manalo Silva. You know, Paul Grealish in this tier? No. I don't, th- I don't think Grealish is, is, or at least I don't think Grealish eats in the same table as these four. I think he's still very good, a very good player. I'm talking about this season. I'm talking about this season. I, think he's a, I still think he's a very good player. I think he's had a good season. But not as the other two. And I think Grealish has been asked to be this, the man. Like um, Rashford's been asked to be the man. at Man United. Or how impactful Saka has been for Arsenal. Or about or Salah. Or the things that Silva provides. I, f- I, s- I still think Grealish is a good player. I still think he's Premier League um, royalty. I just don't think he's mo- uh, Sorry. Uh, he isn't moving me as much as these four. But leaving Grealish alone. Um, Cody Gakpo, 
I think he's been alright. Uh, there isn't really much shape to say about Gakpo. He's not really had a lot to, you know, a lot to do really. I'm just going to put Gakpo at mid. I'm also going to put Alvarez at mid. I'm going to put Martinelli at Premier League quality. I think Martinelli has been excellent. The fact that he's been able to score 15 goals in the Premier League this season has kind of gone under the radar. I think Martinelli definitely deserves a bit more respect. And next season, Arsenal fans coming into a year of development for both Saka and Martinelli. It's going to be very interesting to see what these two are able to do next year. Then Elanga, another player who I just think is just been below average at best. Both of these two below average players. And as a, as a United fan, I think I'm being critical enough and I think I'm being kind of fair by putting these two are below average. I think, I think that's where they, they rank. Then you have a guy like Matomo, I think season he's been good. Then you have a guy like Anthony. And with Anthony is... <sighs> I'm going to put Anthony here at mid. Gakpo should really be here. I'm going to put Anthony here at mid, but... I'm going to put Anthony at good. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of that. I'm going to leave Anthony at good. Yeah, I am. Garnacho. I also think Garnacho. I think Garnacho has been better than Anthony this season. He hasn't been asked to do as much as Anthony because he hasn't started as much. But when Garnacho has played, he's been very good. Very, very good. Definitely a bright future ahead for Alejandro. <laughs> then Phil Foden. <sighs> Foden, I think Foden, in terms of playing ability, he is definitely in this tier. But as far as this season goes, the season that Foden's had this year, <sighs> I'll, I'll leave Foden there. I, I just can't, I can't put Foden in the same tier as these guys. Because I, I think, I think that Foden has definitely the potential to be in this tier. I think Foden has the potential to be one of the very best players in the world. But this season, I'll leave him here for now. And then finally, Morris, I'll put him next to his teammate. I'll put him next to his buddy. Another Premier League quality player. But yeah, guys, this is the list. No one made it to the very bottom, bottom of the tier list. These are the players. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of it. And yeah, this is it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching to the end, guys. You're much appreciated. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, share. Do all those things for me. Um, it really helps to grow the channel. And you are, I I'll be eternally grateful if you do those things for me, guys. Once again, thank you for watching until the end. And I'll see you guys soon.